a quantification of that energy. Um, but using our LCA models, we can now hopefully incorporate that into policy capacity. On campus, UBC Renew is committed to achieving uh, lead, stand lead silver standards. And now with LCA data, we can analyze the effectiveness of these systems. This graph is looking at three buildings on campus of similar construction. Um, the Aral building is lead gold. Kaiser and ICIS are concrete construction similar to Aral. And as you can see um, from just looking at their primary energy consumption, Kaiser performs better. This is just looking at the construction and manufacturing phase. So this is where LCA can tie in and kind of pick up where lead doesn't continue. So looking at construction, LCA might be the way to go. Um, just following up with that, on the construction end of things, maybe looking only at a brand is not the way to go, but we need to look at the whole life cycle to really achieve that system. Um, this is UBC's plan to reduce greenhouse gas emissions uh, over the next 40 years. Um, by 2050, UBC wants to be carbon zero. Um, so if we look, take a look at our LCA models and the greenhouse gas emissions, um, and if we were to model this as getting to net zero in 2050. This blue line is the trend that our buildings need to follow. And as you can see, the wood, which is in the green, um, is the carbon sequester. So either we start building all wood or develop some innovative systems to get down to zero. Um, for lead to be really effective, it needs to be able to quantify the impact flows to and from nature as for the building's whole life cycle. Currently, LEED makes assumptions about the flow, but with LCA integrated in, these assumptions can be proven. But the first step is definitely getting some consistency in the collection and evaluation of LCA, and being able to use tools and model and systems that are easy to access and user friendly. And now I'm going to pass on to Ben. I'm going to talk about some recommendations to improve our study. Um, uh, our study is a good starting point, but it can be expanded to be more inclusive and more meaningful. Um, first of all, we can quantify some of the uncertainties that come from our assumptions and inputs. Um, also, we can collaborate with other disciplines and bring other areas of expertise into our LCA. And we should use our LCA as an educational tool to further the knowledge um, outside of UBC. First of all, um, in our study, we only consider the structure and envelope of the building, which is just the structural skeleton and then the wall coverings inside of it. Um, there are actually a lot more materials that go into a building than that. Um, if you consider the plumbing, which is the piping, the toilets, um, HVAC, which is ducting, furnace, um, you know, the electrical finishing materials and permanent furniture, which is the floor and the ceiling, um, lab stations, theater seating, um, all of these materials amount to as much as half of the building's embodied energy. So <coughs> modeling them could actually make a significant difference. Um, also, we only considered manufacturing and construction. Uh, we didn't look beyond to the building's operational life or end of life. Um, to get a full picture of the impacts, you need to consider the operation. Um, for example, if a building uses uh, insulation twice as thick, um, when you model just the construction, that building looks like it has a higher impact in embodied energy because of that extra insulation. But if you looked at that building over its operational life, it would actually use less energy and have a net benefit. Um, so this could have uh, misleading results when you compare just the construction of the buildings. Um, so it's important to keep those limitations of this study in mind. Um, finally, when you talk about uncertainty, um, there are a few points. Uh, first of all, 
we modeled our buildings as if they had been constructed today. Some of them were built almost 100 years ago. Um, construction methods have changed quite a bit since then, and we don't know how those changes would affect uh, the impacts of our study. So those would be further investigated to see if they would have a significant difference. Um, also, when we modeled our buildings, uh, we modeled them by assembly groups, which we separate the floors and the walls, the ceiling, the foundations into groups like this, and then build them up within Athena. Um, because Athena is attended for uh, conceptual design phase, uh, there's a lot of limitations when you're trying to fit our takeoff into that assembly framework. So it required us to make a lot of assumptions. Uh, for example, you can't specify the dimensions of a beam or a column um, or you have to fit into a limited number of options for quantities and dimensions. Um, so maybe to quantify some of this uncertainty, uh, you could model a building using the extra basic materials which you would have to go through your building takeoff and measure the uh, building materials in mass and volume instead and then enter them that way, which would be a lot more work, but you would get an idea then if you compared those two studies to see how close we were by modeling by assembly. Um, also, Athena uses non-regionalized uh, re results for the impact estimate. So we don't really know how that's going to impact us in Vancouver um, and how the magnitude of our results would change if they were lower mainland specific. Now, Kristen's going to talk about collaboration and Thank you, Megan. Hi, everyone. I'm Kristen, and today I'm going to talk about one of the applications of our LCA study. Um, so one way we can apply our study is to collaborate with um, some programs at UBC or with other disciplines at UBC. So one of them is UBC Renew. Uh, UBC Renew is a program here on campus um, which is involved with um, determining if a building is better to be demolished or if it should just be renovated in terms of its environmental impacts. So right now, um, UBC Renew is, um, has five phases that it's implementing. And right here, it just has a little summary of phase two. And what can be seen from this is that they're already quantifying some of the effects or impacts of um, construction um, renovation and demolition. So for example, they have how much, 27 million liters of water, uh, 32 million kilowatts hour of electricity. So this sort of shows that they're already using um, LCA to quantify these results. So for us, um, the students that have performed these LCAs, we have a knowledge base on how to perform these. So we can collaborate with them. So they can use us as a tool to perform these LCAs. And also we would benefit from it because we would learn more about the um, construction phases and everything and also learn from their expertise. Um, so another thing that we can do is collaborate with other disciplines at UBC. So for this project, each student in the class performed a life cycle assessment on one whole building. So that was actually a lot of work. <laughs> so. Um, one, one suggestion we would have is for, for further uh, development would be to collaborate with um, many different people that have different specifications and different uh, specializations. Uh, a couple of examples would be to collaborate with some mechanical engineering students. Um, this would be really good for creating some energy models so we better understand the energy performance of our building. Um, we can also collaborate with planning students to create the infrastructure models and architecture students. Um, so we all had to be able to read and analyze the building drawings, and many of us didn't have much experience, so that would be very helpful to have architecture students on board for that. And also, um, the Athena program, Athena Impact Estimator, was designed to be used during the design phase of a building. Um, we used it more for um, analyzing a current building, so perhaps if an architecture student was working on a project, we could work with them and perform an LCA study so that would work hand in hand. Um, as for the LCA impact categories, which were previously discussed, 
um, being able to